Join us now on Flickr at flickr.com slash groups slash art of photography. Welcome to the Art of Photography. My name is Ted Forbes, and in the last couple episodes, we have talked about darkroom chemicals, how to get your film into a developing tank, and today I'm going to show you actually how to develop your film. And so come with me into our little makeshift darkroom, and we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is get your chemicals ready. And uh, I measure off about 400 milliliters for the specific tank. If you're not sure, just fill up the tank when it's empty and uh, pour it back into a measuring cup and see, see what it takes to fill it up. Uh, but you'll see that I have my developer on the left, my stop bath in the middle, and my uh, fixer on the right. Now we're going to have to have this I like to develop at a specific temperature. Now I have this kind of bowl of ice here. What I'm going to do is simply place these into the ice. There's a little bit of ice and a little bit of water at the bottom. And I go ahead and get those in, get my thermometer in so I can make sure that all my chemicals are at 20 degrees Celsius. So what you're going to do is just simply stick that in and wait for a little while. And uh, when it's time, you'll go ahead and pull them out and you're ready to start developing. All your chemicals are at 20 degrees Celsius. They're all controlled. I know that my development time is going to be nine minutes in this case uh, that's going on. And uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to set the timer to nine minutes and go ahead and start pouring in the developer. And uh, you want to do this, notice I haven't started the clock yet, but you want to do this fast enough if you go too fast, you'll start sloshing it everywhere, and if you go too slow, you'll take too long. And so once this is fill, and you can see it at the top, there's a little liquid in the top, I'll go ahead and put the lid on, and I'll start developing. Now what I'm going to do is a process here called agitation, where I'm simply spinning slowly. I'm inverting the tank. Notice that I'm also inverting at the same time, I'm also spinning the tank in a clockwise motion. And so what I'm going to do, this is known as agitation, and uh, I'm going to do this for the first 30 seconds. And what this is going to do is it's going to get the film, uh, make sure that, that it's up to the same temperature the developer is, and just kind of get things started. Uh, once I'm done, what you're going to see me do is tap here on the counter three times, and I'm going to let it sit. Now what you're going to do is let 30 seconds go by. And every 30 seconds, you're going to agitate just one inversion, okay? And so the reason, you're going to see when the second hand gets to the zero here, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll in fact invert the tank. The reason for doing this is the, the developer that's right up against the film exhausts itself, and so simply this just replenishes it and puts fresh developer up next to the film layer. So once we're done with the, uh, you can see also, yeah, here it is on the 30 second mark, I'm developing again. So this is very important to the development. If you don't agitate, you'll burn the chemicals out that are right next to the film and it'll, it won't work. Um, when we're ready, and you can see that I know that it takes me about 15 seconds to dump this chemical out and get the next one in, we're going to put the stop bath in. So I'm simply going to put the developer back in the, um, the container I got it from. That's dead now, we'll actually dump that out later. And if you watch the second hand right as it's about to hit the zero, make sure all the liquid is out of the tank. You're going to simply pour the stop bath into the light, the light trap there. And remember, no light is getting in, only liquid. So it's kind of a nice convenience because we're able to do this in the light. Once I've got the stop bath in, I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on here and set the timer for one minute. And I'm going to agitate continuously during this one minute. Remember, agitation is slow. The name makes it sound like it's a violent thing, and it's not. It's not a cocktail shaker. You're simply just making sure that you've got fresh chemical uh, right next to the film base. When the stop bath is done, we're going to pour that out. And uh, you'll, you'll figure out, it takes me about 15 seconds, know that you don't have to be dead on spot accurate um, with your chemical times here because, you know, at a nine minute development time, and we're into the other chemicals now which are less time sensitive, but I'm pouring the fixer in right now. And what the fixer is going to do, the stop bath simply killed any developer that was left on the film and stopped the development. Now the fixer is going to take, notice our film is still light sensitive, I've not taken this lid off yet or the main lid, I've only released the light trap. I'm going to set the fix for about nine minutes here. But the fix basically is going to take off the light sensitive particles that were not developed. So this would be dark areas on your film. If I took the lid off now, those dark areas would overexpose and again, this would not work right. So again, I'm going to agitate for the first 30 seconds here, which uh, just like the developer, notice it's slow. I do about one inversion, it takes about five seconds to do an inversion. And the first 30 seconds go by, I'm going to tap on the table again. This is to dislodge any air bubbles that are in the tank. I didn't mention that earlier. If you have air bubbles up next to your film, the developer will not hit it right, or any of the other chemicals for that matter, and you'll have a problem. One thing you can do here is when we're done with the fix process, this is after about nine minutes, I'm going to go ahead, I'm not going to dump the chemicals yet, but I'm going to pull the film out and check it. If you're not sure about the time, 
and you can see that you just pull a little bit of the development up, or the, excuse me, the developed film up. Uh, you don't want any spots or any grunge or anything on the film. You can see this one's pretty clear. If you do have some spots and some grunge and it doesn't look like the fixer's done yet, you can go ahead and roll this back up, put it back in the tank, and continue to uh, fix it a while longer, give it another five minutes or so. But this one is pretty much done, so I think I'm good to go on this. Um, and uh, we're going to go ahead and dump the fixer out here. And you can see, just hold, hold the tank in with your finger so it doesn't come flying out because it is loose. And now we're going to begin the wash process. And the first part of this, basically what I'm going to do is hold the uh, tank under the tap and just get all the, the uh, chemical out of there that I can off the bat. Just give it a good rinse. Now the actual wash process, we're going to have to really make sure these are clean. And you cannot overwash. So leave it in there as long as you need. I usually leave it in for about 30 minutes uh, with a standard fixer. And uh, you can see I'm dumping it out there. We're just going to let that sit for for a good good half hour. Now, since we're going to leave this for about half hour, this is a good time to clean up. Go ahead and set your set your timer so you know how long it's been. And typically, you can reuse chemicals. The developer is dead. You're going to have to dump that, but the fixer is reusable. So I'm just simply going to pour this back into the original container I got it out of, and I store these under the bathroom sink to keep them out of the way. But uh, since we're just in a 30 minute wash now, I'm going to go ahead and clean some stuff up now. Put the stop bath away. Stop bath is also replenishable. And you can see I'm dumping out the developer here. If you're going to dump chemicals in the sink at this point, notice I've removed the film out of the tap because I don't want to dump anything into there, obviously. And so we'll go ahead and get those rinsed. Now the final process, this is jumping ahead 30 minutes is I like to use an LFN solution, which basically will lower the surface tension of the, uh, of the water. I'm going to go ahead and put some distilled water in at this point because the tap water contains junk. And this is a final rinse, so I'm just getting the film as clean as I can possibly get it. So I'm going to go ahead and put my film in there, and this is uh, with the LFN. Uh, this is not as critical. You can agitate a little faster if you want to. I usually leave it in for about no, two minutes or so just to make sure we're good. These are film clips. And what I'm going to do is, is use these to hang the film to dry. You can see this one has a weight in the end of it. You put that at the bottom so it hangs straight and doesn't curl. Go ahead and get all the excess liquid off of, uh, off of your film spool here as much as you can. You're not going to get it totally dry, obviously, but you're trying to minimize that. Now we use the LFN solution so when, the, when this dries, it's not going to spot. Uh, the water won't be as stubborn about evaporating off the film surface. But you're basically going to do these. I like to hang it in the shower, and the reason I like the shower in the bathroom is because the steam from the shower, when you use it daily, uh, it ends up taking all the dust out of the air. It makes it heavy and makes it fall out of the air. So dust is the enemy when you're dealing with film. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hang that to dry, and in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and clean. This is a very important step. Do not leave a mess in your darkroom. It's tempting to want to dry this stuff and go ahead and get cranking, and it's not worth it. Uh, make sure you have a clean environment. You can go ahead once the film is dry. It takes about 45 minutes to an hour. I left this one for an hour. Just take a pair of scissors and just go ahead and cut the ends off. I'm going to put these in some archival sleeves which hold four negatives per strip. So I'm going to cut these at every four images. And you can see I'm cutting there. And then finally cut the other end off. And you now have developed some film. Okay, so that is more or less the process involved with developing film. Um, I hope I didn't make it look too easy or too difficult either way. Um, but it is, it's a fun process once you get the hang of it and you can start making adjustments like I was talking about. And we'll talk about in later episodes how you can change your development times a little bit, uh, how you can change your agitation method depending on what you're doing. There are other methods like a stand, um, a stand development where you don't agitate at all and we'll get into those later that have different effects on the film. So anyway, all this to say, uh, I hope you found this useful and next time we're going to go into talking about what do you do once your film is developed. Well, you basically have two options at this point. You can make a print or you can scan your film and get it into the digital domain inside your computer. And we'll talk about that next time. So anyway, this has been The Art of Photography. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.